I don't really have one answer for how I celebrate my baptism. It was mainly, it was both lifestyle. I consider it to have been lifestyle that it that I received it in the first place. But uh, I had already worked on a certain amount of music. Uh, I continued to do so. I broke apart from... What had happened was that a guy who had got me some DJ work, his and my friendship had eroded because we had differing views on who should be on drugs while working and who shouldn't. And on both for, on both arguments, he, he lost because he'd rather be on his mum's tit. But um, do I go on and continue to DJ on my own? I thought, well, I will. And uh, it was at I was at the bequest of I had I had my sense of um, suits and appropriate dress in terms of persona, like. Is it best to be drugged, undrugged? And see, you have to think of these things because you do a wide range of shows. Sometimes you're doing uh, birthdays, 18th birthday parties, children, uh, schools formals, children's parties, um, engagement parties, weddings, year, year 12 fucking formals. Um, when you're doing weddings, you've got like a tri-generational split and divide where you've got to entertain the bride and groom with them i would make i would I'd insist i go i'll do it oh i did i did what an indian friend called her curry ball and that involved her and her friends coming over and they told me how to put together a song peak like they said we want this song chopped with this song chopped with this song chopped with this song chopped with this bit of this song can you do it on your computer and i did and i gave them the discs and what they did in the meantime before the actual set was tell me what other Indian songs I could play for them. But they choreographed, they said, okay, now play, like, you know, the master song. And that was a song they had all rehearsed, a choreographed a whole dance to. And it reminded me of being at Rocker Stedford. It was beautiful. They were doing all these. What it took me a while to get over was having an Indian friend saying, can you DJ for our curry ball? I was like, your what? Our curry ball. I'm sorry, you refer to a function of some kind? Can you DJ for our curry ball? What's the name again of your function? Can you DJ for our curry... Okay, 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 I'm not racist, but yes. And then went like that. And then... And there was that. And then when you do weddings, you have the bride and the groom. With them, I would sit down and say, okay, I want a list. When, you, when you're being a jukebox DJ and you're not... See, one rare event was Toast, which is where Toast was closing in Civic, and seven DJs got an hour each. And for that hour, we could play what was out, considered our stuff, and we were advertised in BMA magazine. And that was a great opportunity, because I got to play songs I'd mixed together at home while training myself. So I got to try and see if they came across as legitimate remixes to the people that were there or if um, they seemed like someone else's. I was hoping that seemed like someone else's remix but that's where you're choosing what you're playing. Other than that you're taking requests you're, uh, and at weddings you have the bride and groom and I would say look you need to tell me what you want played and you need to tell me at least 10 songs that you don't want played. So, like, the songs that you hate because I don't want to ruin your fucking wedding. It's very important. So I built my own code of conduct as I went. And it was always, it's always, the audience is always first. What you need to make sure is that you don't, I make a good case for those pill, pill testing things because you don't want to be given a ketamine, um, a, a pill that includes ketamine. If you get given a ketamine pill, you'll have a horse tranquilizer in your system and you'll fall asleep in the middle of your own gig. And that's how you lose a gig at a club. But um, finding out what, at weddings, you find out what they don't want to hear and you rule it out so that they never cop a song where they boo you. Because you don't want to get booed when they have the kids, the grandparents and the bride and groom's generation all booing you at the same fucking time. And that was the adventure.
Um, then there was also the aspect of writing. I'd already been inspired towards philosophy and writing uh, before and after baptism. I had, so I kept on doing that. Because of the Shakespearean stress on, and it doesn't matter, I went to the class where they said, did Shakespeare really write Shakespeare? And I'm like, is your mum, is your mum really your mum? Like, it's, it's just as relevant a question to me because uh, because be true to yourself always it's really not um, or to thine own self be true it's not a matter of just knowing a source to quote it's a, it's a beautiful idea and um, so more philosophy more creating art more creating music and that's how I, I celebrate that. I generally, on the anniversary of the day, will keep to myself um, a social minimalist on the day, on the anniversary of the day, 18-9. Uh, now, I'm pissed off that, yeah, so, so because uh, 19, I was age 19 when I was baptised, what am I here playing guessing games about going well surveillance agencies will run into a conflict of interest unless he has two screens on for co COVID then you can film him then you then he can then you can get away with filming him and then you could blah, 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 blah. it's pedophilic for an agency to put me on the mental health act unless they have ab ab uh, adopted me as a 25 year old man with my full consent and form now I'm ditching this bog of a country because of how this country has treated me. And I say it again, bog of a country. I'm, I'm weary of your Dunlop and your drive-by shit. These drive-by people, oh, what's that got to do with you? Uh, let's see, recognition of Possible the license plate game, possible the recognition of the drivers. Um, but what's that got to do with you? Look, if a biophobic video is beyond your comprehension, I'm not here to explain it to you. I'm not here to tell you how you don't get any Christ art so you can try and profile it. It's beyond that. It's beyond your ability to do that. If you can't even say Adam and Eve's kids were incestuous and that's why we're, make, we're probably making pedophiles in our churches then fucking we're not going to get off on, on the right foot in a conversation. Like, oh, but what if they're just symbols for pedophiles? Well, great. Now give them a cape and you can have, like, super ped. Super ped. Adam and Eve are only metaphors. Metaphors. Fours. 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 Super ped. You know, like, uh, have a go, having a go at our our, our art... Uh, um, while your inbred God makes you feel shiny as long as you stay clear of Granny Smith apples and con the fruit or, you know, you try to con me with the fruit, the fruit, the fruit or con the fruit or, you know, when I, when we fell for that apple thing once, you gotta fuck a rib hole and fucking I'll argue with you when you fuck a rib hole. Because... Uh, you know, police, police are going to come up with the dumbest, dumbest, dumbest ways to interpret art by people more intelligent than them. They're not even being an understudy; they're just uh, underhandling. Uh, Don't they love their underhandling? So I'll leave this bogs of the country before you further fucking disrepute my Baptist, my favorite artist, before you go another day calling me Christian. I'll leave this bogs of the country and I will forget to flush. Because those of you who are a bit nutty might need some me to leave you a deposit of empirical proof as to my counterclaim. 
Bye. Sure, Adolf Adolf Hitler destroyed more of his own invested property than just the Reichstag. But can you prove that he actually dis even destroyed the Reichstag? Where's your proof? What I need you to do is prove it. A posteriori proof is considered proof once empirical standards are met, and a priori proofs are considered logically deductive or logical proofs that can be established without or via talk, without the need to say 1 plus 1 is 2 has to be in gold um, metal at the front of the Legislative Assembly or else no one in, in Australia, uh, in the heart of the nation, should be expected to understand addition. And it's a Freemason slime move when they go, oh, prove it, prove it. Because these religious unifying cunts, like they, they can't even, and I'm going to this in further into my, in my book, I'm going this further in notes when I was last hospital detained. You can't tell the difference between a religious unifier and a church denomination. There's no such thing, because there's no such thing as unifying all the religions without all the religions disowning their religion in favor of the united one, the unified one. They would go, yes, we are all members we are all members of religion X now. You know, if you say our religion is based on unifying Judaism, Christianity and Islam, then what is it so long as Judaism, Christianity and Islam still exist in any form or in any denomination? What it is, is is um, a denominational phony piece of fucking crap. And I copped it two rounds through at Capital Chemist Group and at the, at the Uniting Church at Tagranong. You don't get to say you're not Catholic, you've unified Protestantism, you've unified Catholicism, you've unified Anglicanism, you've unified every branch of Christianity that there is. You've made like a tree, branched out and left, and that's what networking is, because you're a bunch of stooge fucking sooks. That's not, religious unification doesn't work. But those who are doing it and have, have learned what to do something, and that's called scam. Uh, the consciences of other people scam because we've we've looked we've looked into it we need infinite diversity and infinite combinations uh that's you, you that unity only serves so much of a purpose as to provide a kind of glue of basic rights in between uh a basic elasticity in between that's what we have in common is is that we are diverse and that, and um not, 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 not that there's going to be one cult that's going to have the, the, the prettiest holy book in the fucking group. So when you find these cunts and these cocksuckers in business, you go up and make a claim to them. Uh, uh, what I want you to do is run checks and go, when they call prove it on you, is their level of proof, is the level of prove it um, something beneath themselves in terms of have they reported as true things that would require proofs that they are now demanding of you to show a standard of proof that they themselves have already undermined? Oh, but I was young and I didn't know that better back then. I was young and ambitious, I admit it. But if you are to come up at me with claims like that, I must insist you prove it. Prove yourself. Prove it. There's a difference between proving ourselves, because we exist unlike your fucking gods, and proving that there's veracity to propositions that undermine your shitty church. And we can do both. It's, uh, as you like to say of us, we do both. We do both. We do both. We do both. So, yeah, I'm no fan of... If that's what they do, if you've got a reporter who's prepared to say, oh, yeah, family farted at House 42... The wind at the time was at such an angle we think it spread down syndrome into the nearest neighborhood and then and then that guy gets to become a, a rich businessman one day and then you you turn around and go are you in league with the freemason poofters and he goes i want you to prove it prove it what possible standard of proof would would satisfy you you've already told us like a, a fart and someone with Down syndrome in the same suburb would, would would amount to proof in that person's case. You got to you got to think about 
they, what they try and do is get abstract concepts and confuse you into thinking you have to prove the impossible. It's not that given the right form of discussion, we couldn't prove what we have to say. It's that networks will cut them off. We know networks will cut them off. We know there'll be certain amounts of censorship. We know they'll employ every form of sexism, racism, um, every type of stereotype stacked up in front of them as a shield against... Yeah, uh, Freemasons of, you know, if you, you want to know what movie I think is like the equivalent of a military, a military tour is from hell. Jo Johnny Depp and, and Heather Graham. Like, they, they need military credits and they need them fucking now. They need better than military credits. She's, she's like a... The spy that shagged the free masonry poofters. Well, she didn't really shag them because they were a little limp to the occasion because they were practicing psychiatry with hammering nails into the front of people's heads. Like, let's try and move the uh, uh, crucifixion from this body part, meow, to this body part, meow. And just tap the nail in, just tap it in, just give it a little tapping. Tap, tap, tap a roo. Tap it. That's it. Tap it in. Tap. Just tap it in. No. Yeah, who's fucking. Who could smash Rupert Murdoch, Roger Tall, and Gary Cairns? Jonathan Depp and Heather Graham could. Just the two of them. And me, of course, but it's been 11 years. It's been quite a drag. Fucking uh, substandard drugs for 11 years. I know what this game is. Isolate the target and malnourish. Repeat. Isolate the target and malnourish. Repeat. Just prove it.